In the previous video, we discussed the linear searching algorithm with its worst time complexity of ON. In this video, I'm going to discuss another basic searching algorithm that has a much faster runtime execution, the binary search. It has a logarithmic time complexity, or O log N. To explain this algorithm, consider the given array with seven elements having indices 0 to 6. There is one very important condition though. For this algorithm to work as expected, items in your array should be sorted first. Binary search won't work if the elements are not in order. So, how does a binary searching algorithm work? Suppose you have an array. For this example, I'll use 4, 5, 10, 14, 15, 20, and 79. And you want to search for an item, say 20. Unlike with linear search, that you have to check each item one by one, starting from index 0 up to the last index. Binary searching works by cutting the search element in half every iteration, until you found a match. Cutting it in half doesn't literally mean deleting half of the array. It would work, but it will just add an unnecessary process. So, you start by using two variables to store the lower bound and the upper bound of your array's index. A third variable is necessary to hold the middle index. You can do this by adding the lower bound and the upper bound, then divide it by 2. Then, test it. If the middle element is the item you're looking for. If not, test if it is less than the middle. If so, reject all elements starting from the middle up to the upper bound by reassigning your upper bound equals to the middle index minus 1. 2 in this case. However, if it is not found in the middle, and also not less than the middle element, then reject all elements from the middle down to the lower bound by resetting the new lower limit equals to the middle index plus 1. And most importantly, you have to do this testing repeatedly until you found the item you're looking for. In this example, during the second iteration, we can already found the 20. And that's the reason why this algorithm is much faster than linear searching, since half of the elements inside your array will automatically be ignored for every iteration. And for this, in the field of computer science, it is also known as half-interval search, logarithmic search, or binary chop. Now, let's try it in code. I'll start by declaring an array of elements 4, 5, 10, 14, 15, 20, and 79. Then I'll declare two variables, lower bound and set it to zero, as well as upper bound, and set it to the size of the array minus 1. Then I'm going to display all the elements inside the array using the for each loop. I would say console that right line, array elements colon, and for each integer item inside my array, I need to display each item separated by tab. Then I'll declare another integer variable search item and use it to store the user input from the keyboard. Now to implement the binary searching algorithm, let's use the while loop. I'll say while lower bound is less than or equal to upper bound, and then I need to declare first a variable that holds the middle index of our array. So I'll type in mid index is equal to lower bound plus upper bound divided by 2. Then I'll ask if the middle element of the array is equal to the search item. And I'll display a console message informing the user that the search item is found at index pointed by the mid index. And then break to get out of the loop once the item is found. And if the middle element is not equal to the search item, perhaps it is less than the middle element. And if so, I'm going to reject half of the elements of the array, starting from the middle element up to the upper bound of the array. So to do that, I'm going to say upper bound is equal to mid index minus 1. And finally, if the search item is not equal or less than the value of the middle element, then definitely it is located somewhere in the right side of the array. What I'm going to do is to reject all the elements to the left starting from the middle 
down to the lower bound. And to do that, I'm going to say lower bound is equal to mid index plus 1. Now, this process must be repeated continuously as long as the lower bound is still less than or equal the upper bound, meaning there are still elements in the array that we haven't checked, or the search item is not yet found. To determine if the search item doesn't exist, I'll declare a Boolean variable, is exist, and initialize it to false. Then, I'll set it to true once the item is found. Outside the loop, I'll add a final if statement asking that if search item doesn't exist, then I'll display a message, search item doesn't exist. Let's run the program. I'll type 20, and it gives me a message, 20 is found at index 5. Great. Let's try it again. I'll type 5, and 5 is found at index 1. Perfect. And lastly, I'll type 1000, and 1000 doesn't exist, and it's working perfectly. Now. I'll add one last modification to this code. I'll add another integer variable, and I'll call it iterations, and initialize it to zero. Now, I want to keep track of the number of times this loop was executed, just to validate the time complexity of our algorithm. And we're inside my loop, but outside the if block, I'll increment iterations variable. And finally, outside the loop, I'll display a message total iterations plus iterations. Now, let's run our program. I'll type 14, and 14 is found at index 3. Since 14 is initially placed exactly in the middle, this is the best case scenario with time complexity of 01. Let's try it again. I'll type 20, and 20 is found at index 5, total iterations 2. One more time, I'll type 45. And now, the total iterations is 3, and this is the worst case scenario, which is O log n, since 45 doesn't exist. Now, it is your time to code.